You're listening to the Mobcast Network. Cult Movie Cantina! Woo! Woo! Hello. This is the podcast that takes a look at your favorite cult films as an alcoholic beverage. I'm here. Shows us someone who's never seen it. Hello. And then we talk about it. We do. Except this week, because it's a cult meeting. We do other stuff, so. And I don't have Except an intro. I'm still drinking. And I don't have an intro for that, so. <laughs> 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 that would just be weird if we were like, here's some where we just talk about BS, which is really what we're going to do, but there's that. Um, I'm your Native American pop culture spirit guide, Scotty, and I'm joined by, as always, your Lady of Libations, Stephanie. Justina, your jellical jester. She, she who knows, knows no movies. movies. Admiral. At your service. At ease. And we're also joined by our producer. Hey, everybody. Number two. Number two. Number two. I'm the only one that doesn't have a comeback, like well, a little thing where you guys repeat something when I say my thing. Oh, that is true, uh, actually. I have one. Well, yeah, but you're the host host. <laughs> Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, to be fair, to, to be, be fair, fair, to be fair, to be fair. Justina came up with herself, so we just added this. <laughs> I mean, we and did though. She knows no movies. Yeah, they yeah are, you yeah. guys did. Yeah, that was organic. And then I had to correct the status. Yeah, um, I had to give myself back a little. Technically, none of y'all came up with mine. Yeah, and Uncle Henry named yours. Yeah, Uncle Henry did yours. You're right. It's fine. We'll but find he works we'll, for us. We'll, we'll That's fi- who he works for. We'll figure it all out. We can no, all, always. I'm good. Being lady libations. You are in the facility fun when necessary. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we, That's just too much. That's, That's a lot what it's boiled down and, to. And, for me, and you also used to do the whole count. The whole oh. thing. Oh. But there's so much. <laughs> it's like if I do... Fil- 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 See, you can't even do it. Facilitator <laughs> of fun, <laughs> lady of libations, and countess Stephanie Von Frankenberry. That's a lot. That's a lot. But that's how you get noticed by interns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. There you go. <laughs> Do yeah, I you make that? Yeah, long go names. On through. Yeah, just keep it. taking it to production. <laughs> yeah. Her long title will get her get her an Oscar. <laughs> That's it. I'll start using my long title again. Um, uh, you can follow us on uh, any fine podcast app. Uh, your favorite one. Uh, we're on there. You're probably listening to us on that right now. Please subscribe. It helps us out. Uh, we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash cult movie cantina. We're on YouTube at youtube.com slash mobcast network. And now we're on TikTok at mobcast. Um, I have a comic book uh, out on Kickstarter right now. No, no, we're coming out now. There's like, a Kickstarter. But Kickstarter they'll still look, and it'll still be there. Yeah, it'll still be there. So it doesn't got, matter. I got a Kickstarter launching on Sunday called uh, <coughs> Chronicles of Limbo. And uh, that was, like, not confident at all. I know, it I is launching on Sunday, <laughs> and it is called Chronicles of Limbo, and you should get it. And it's Because it's about a vampire and a super... Natural little girl that travels between worlds, I think. And the first issue is really good. I love how she ended with, I think. Mm-hmm. She did I think she yeah. travels. I think it's dimensions. I think they're called dimensions. Read the book for more. <laughs> <laughs> the comic book is really good. That's that's. That, I love that. her so much. You just got to be confident. That's going to be my bl- That's going to be my blurb. Read the book for no more, Justina. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's literally how you should do everything. I got some very nice blurbs. I I sent it out to some friends I knew who are in the industry and around uh, in an industry adjacent. And as I was like, "Hey, can you uh if if you would you read it if you like it? Can you send me some nice right. things to say about it?" And I got some really nice ones. Good. I was I was very surprised. Very nice. Um uh, Joey Cliff, who's a Native American showrunner for a Netflix kid series called um, Spirit Rangers. Oh, that's cool. He's mm-hmm. been a friend of mine on Twitter for the last couple of years, and I sent it to him, and he sent back some really nice compliments. So, is that oh. the one about horses? No, they're like kids with like who get supernatural powers. That's okay. just spirit you're thinking. Okay, of. like Native American supernatural powers gotcha. based yeah. on gotcha. their spirit animals. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Is my correct? She, w- she was <laughs> thinking. Of the, she was thinking of the DreamWorks movie Spirit. Thank you. Right. Uh, I, I did learn, speaking of spirit animals, Callie told me when we were going to work last week that she had many gifts. And I was like, okay. She was like, not like gifts you get like a present, but like gifts. And I was like, Did you make okay. a mutant baby? So this kid's <laughs> seven. And one You're of them seven. is that she's a cheetah, y'all. She's because a cheetah. when she's running, that's her spirit animal. <laughs> because when she's running, she runs really fast. She, she's like the wind. Yeah, she was like, so <laughs> my spirit it. animal is a cheetah. That's one of her gifts. Another okay. one is that she knows the words to all the songs. Because regardless if she knows the song or not, she can sing it. And, she's like, and sometimes I say the bad words because I just know the word's going to happen and I forget to not say them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. So that's another gift that she has. I think that's nice just them. I mean, I think I, that they're just preemptively trying to get out of trouble for saying bad words uh, when no, singing no. songs. With this kid? Yes. So, yeah. so yeah. first of all, uh, 
adorable. Second of all, not very useful for the X-Men, but, you know, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I know all the songs like I mean, while singing you know songs. What it, to you, know any what it song is, you know what matter. it is useful for, though? Uh, karaoke nights at, <laughs> at Krakoa. There right, you go. At Krakoa karaoke nights. Which I want to write. Marvel, call me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to write that so hard. Um, Sorry, carry on. We were talking about spirit animals, your friends, you sent it out. Yes, yeah, yeah. so, so yeah. the Kickstarter's coming in uh, the J- July 31st, uh, trying to raise two grand to, for printing. The book's done, finally. Nice. And, and it looks great. And um, the I'll, I will also announce that the third issue is almost done. Oh, look at you. Right? The first time in my life. I won't have to wait. Like the I, I, I plan to do the third Kickstarter in the fall. And then I think, and by the, then you'll have the fourth. The issue? The fourth one should be done. That's before fantastic. The, before the hey. And then we'll do the trade in the spring. That's that's, my, that's kind of my plan. If everything goes wrong, the one. So yeah, it's coming up. You just knocked on that computer. It's not wood, Scotty. That worked. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. Um, you had a story. I do. Or did you want to? Th- no, it's, uh, no. I'll I'll lead with this. Um, I was reminded this week that I need to take a road trip next April. And if you're available, I want you to come with me. Where is the road trip? In the middle of nowhere, Texas. <laughs> okay, so like... Um, like, I don't know the town or anything. I just know it's in the middle of nowhere, Texas. I want to take you into the middle of nowhere, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> For what? <laughs> uh, I would like you guys to come with me to watch A Total Eclipse. Oh, Total eclipse of the heart. Because I've seen a total eclipse in to- totality, and it is fantastic. So I want to take a long road trip for something that literally lasts two minutes. Um, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. I make no promises. I've seen a total eclipse like I in my life. Not. Like, like in totality? Yeah. Okay, it's, I have not. It is a thing. April is one of our busiest months. Sure. So it just depends on when. Sure. Well, plus, we've got you know Huntsville, and then my no, Huntsville's afterwards. Oh, I've, I've, it's on my calendar. I've, I've okay, when in April do you uh, win? I, when I, in I April? just look, I just looked it up. It's, it's like April eighth. April eighth. Yeah. April eighth. How long of a drive? Give it, me, give me hours. It, 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 give me, give it will me probably more, be a two day trip. More, a two day trip. More. Yeah, I mean Texas. Texas is. It's not that hard to get. It's to. in the middle of Texas. No, Texas. You it's could huge. get. It's not hard to get to Texas. The, it's hard to get. To, to the, the mid- other side, side of Texas. Texas is takes That's seven hours. Day. Let's put it this way: it takes seven hours to get to Houston, no, yeah, yeah. which is this side of Texas, because yeah, right. my son and lives yeah. there. And it's past Houston. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying okay, to say. Okay. And, and I haven't picked the, the town where we're going to watch it at, but it, that that's got the closest to totality. Huh. And so, but here's here's what I want to do now. Okay. I want to take a picture of us, and then just when we stop places. Just post our picture in different places, and s- and <laughs> sign it and hang it up. Just hang <gasps> it. Up. That's what I want to do. Yes. Just sign it and like hang it and like <laughs> places. Listen, we can always find a Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Don't play. You know they're all over the internet. Yeah, we'll I mean, make we'll make black and white ones for Cracker Barrels. Yeah. <laughs> I really. I saw that picture at the Cracker Barrel down the road. I swear <laughs> to God. I, I really did. think this would be fun. It really did, April eighth. What day is that? That's on? a Monday. So. You got plenty. In of time. theory, we yes, yeah, so I got plenty a, of time. Plenty of time to think about it and schedule it. It's yeah, a, it's a Monday, so that would mean we'd leave probably a Saturday. So if we left uh, for the weekend, we could take time stopping a lot going there. Yeah. Sure. And then do it the eighth, and then book it back. Yeah. Sure. Like make it a fri- like make Friday the start of the trip, so we can have stops maybe like Friday mm-hmm. evening, af- mm-hmm. like late mm-hmm. afternoon. Y'all are that sounds like a week long trip. Because if it, if the if it's on Monday the total eclipse, like what time? And then we um, won't be back. We wouldn't be back until like Tuesday. It's on my calendar. So we missed two days of work. It'd be Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. That is not my calendar. That is a calculator. <laughs> I was like, "Why is this working?" Ten. Ten a.m. or p.m. A.m. Okay, because the sun is out. <laughs> yeah, just so. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not a lunar eclipse. Yes, Which we don't get one of those for a long time. Right. I think the last one to hit like last year. It's been a yeah. long time, and it's not nearly. I mean, they're pretty, but they're not as not okay. Like, like I, 
So, 10 a.m., and then we could just immediately get on the road afterwards to come back. Yeah, yeah we could spend more time throughout the week. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's I can do that. Down. Let me oh, yeah, we've got a bunch of months to plan for it. But I'm going regardless. I want to see if y'all want to come with me. I think it'd be fun. That sounds like fun. Because <coughs> it's, it's... I think the trip going up there will be fun. I know. I think so. Yeah. And the clips is cool. And the clips is cool. And you come back. Um, the... Um, because when you see a total eclipse, like, in totality, and you take off the glasses and look at it, I get, like, why, like, ancient people were like, we got to sacrifice people because this shit can't happen. <laughs> 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 we need to stop. We need the sun back now because that's fucking creepy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that shit is eat. Because you look at it like, oh, I get the Iris Saruman now. I get this. I get everything. I get it all. I get it all. It's just, uh. you know, this all makes sense. So, But I saw one in 17 or 18, whenever they came. I saw it yeah. in Tennessee. And uh, mainly it was like, I need to find the next one. The next one wasn't until 24. Yeah, last, I mean, they happen every year, but like over here. It's last, like, yeah. the, the last total solar eclipse was 2017. Yeah, 17. So I, saw that I remember um, being in school, and I can't remember w- what year it was. It was like 83 or 84. Yeah, because it made a big deal out of it at school, and we made our little uh, boxes and... Yeah, you know, and all that kind of stuff. That way, you can look look at it. But I will buy yeah. three. I will buy uh, eclipse glasses early though, because we bought them late and couldn't hardly get. We got cheap ones. I want good ones. Okay. And you actually don't. I mean, you need them for a while, like it's happening. But when it happens, you can take it off. Yeah. And you've got two minutes. You can look at this fireball thing, and then, then that's pretty cool. And then like, but it's crazy too because you can look at it, and like the moment it starts to like just the split second that it moves, you can't look at it anymore. So it's like, and eh, fuck you. <laughs> yep. And now you can probably be blind <laughs> if you look at it. Yeah, well, you look at it too fun. long. Yeah. So, that would be a fun trip. So mm-hmm. that's, w- that's what I wanted. I, yeah, it was kind of in the early days because I watched it through. I, w- I was at the house in mm-hmm. Perdido. And we watched it through my dad's uh, welding glasses, which probably wasn't recommended. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. No. no. I mean, that's kind of what they used in Oppenheimer. Yep. Welding glasses. <laughs> a bunch of Oppenheimer. <laughs> Sp- uh, that's a good segue. Yeah. Uh, two of us have seen Oppenheimer. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about it? I thought it was probably the most amazing movie I have seen in a very long time. I agree. It is. Uh, it was phenomenal. Uh, the acting was superb. The storyline was perfect. Um, I, I have nothing negative to say. The, um, I have nothing negative to say either. Uh, I'm curious, though, because Nolan... Made this for IMAX because that's his thing. Yeah, and I don't know if IMAX would enhance it. Yeah, I don't think so because it's a lot of it a story. A lot of right. it is, a lot of you know, the it goes b- between black and white and color, and it's it's a, it's a very Aaron Sorkin, Chris Nolan movie. It's a the, lot of the guys talking rooms about stuff. Yeah, the only point in the whole movie where it might make a difference is the actual explosion. Yeah, watching Trinity happen is and, just like. But after that, it's. No, right, you, so don't, you don't need IMAX. So I was like, I was kicking myself for not seeing IMAX, and I saw it. I was like, I don't have to see this into my yeah, eyes. Yeah, it's not an IMAX. Fi- I don't. I don't think it's worth it for the IMAX, except you can get alcohol at the IMAX <laughs> in Pensacola, and alcohol makes everything better. So, so. Well, I typically, typically, it yeah. Is, yeah. Got a wound? Alcohol. You Broken know. heart? Alcohol. alcohol. Celebrate? Alcohol. alcohol. <laughs> Podcast? <Yeah>. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also saw Barbie. I did both of them in, the, in one day. I'm going to see Barbie as soon as I leave here. Uh, you will like Barbie. I'm hoping Mackenzie likes it. I think Mackenzie will. I think she will too. I think Mackenzie will like it. I don't know about the younger girls. I won't take them to see it. I I never <coughs> saw this and went. Oh, I'm gonna take my kids to see that. Like the people that are like, oh, it's not really a kids movie. It's like, well, no shit, it's not a kids movie. Like it, it doesn't look like a kids movie. Right. It's just a brand that you know from a child, your child. Right. Right. Yeah. First of all, what surprised me that it's PG thirteen. Do you know what I'm excited the most about this what? Barbie movie? Is finally people get interested in Barbie again and I can finally sell my Barbies. <laughs> That's happening. That's what I'm saying. That is happening. I am really so if you want to help me do that, Scotty <laughs> <laughs> Take him to St. Tammany. We're doing St. Tammany. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I don't, the hype might be gone by then. I'm trying to I, like. Then eBay's all much. Uh, yeah, yeah, eBay, yeah. Because I'm thinking, yeah. But I will take him to St. Tammany. Just take him to St. Tammany. We'll see if we make some money. Yeah, I got that in Rocket City in October. That's my October shows. Yeah. I've got a show in two weeks. <laughs> What's it doing in two weeks? 
Uh, there's a show in Pearl, Mississippi. It's a one-day show. And, and then, then we're going to Shreveport. And then we're going to Shreveport uh, about two weeks after that to go. But I'm not set up for that. Me and Steph are going to go hang out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fun. It, it will be fun. Mm-hmm. It will be fun. Going to go see Kevin Smith. I know. And uh, hopefully, every time we've tried, something's happened. Yeah, so. but it looks like it looks like it's pretty much a done deal unless. His mom dies or something, and she's. Oh, she, don't say that. God. Well, well, she yeah, has had God. a health scare, but she's doing way better. She's I back know, on that stuff. but don't, don't even. Yeah, don't you know if you throw if you throw something like that out on a podcast, it's not yeah. a good luck. <laughs> and Damn now it, not Scotty! Damn it, podcast, Scotty! <laughs> I swear to God, I've ruined it. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> you, now you'll have to apologize to Kevin Smith when you see him. Be like, sorry, I killed your mom. Oh no! <laughs> don't. <laughs> That would be sad. Yeah, yeah I, I you wanna, think? You're I, just slipping on down the slope. I, I, I don't, don't want to kill Kevin Smith's mom. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, that would be terrible. It would be yeah, terrible. Would be. I mean, killing anybody's mom would yeah, be bad. Yeah, anybody, yeah. I don't know, Hitler's mom. <laughs> well, she might be a lovely person. I mean, H- Hitler didn't like person. her, so yeah. that means that she's probably nice. <laughs> she's probably good. <laughs> yeah. It's all her fault. <laughs> He just wanted to be a painter. <laughs> well, maybe yeah. it, maybe he had he not sucked so bad <laughs> yeah. at it. <laughs> and, then, and then instead he went to war and got uh, uh, pepper gas in his face. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. And got a little cute mustache out of it that Charlie Chaplin was like, ah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, damn. Damn it. <laughs> oh, fucking Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Chaplin's like, welcome to our cold movie cantina. <laughs> 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 or were we trying not to kill Kevin Smith's mom and talk about Hitler? <laughs> it was and yet uh, they were connected in one conversation. <laughs> well, I was talk um listening to an interview with um and I never say his name right. Um director from New Zealand. It's uh, Taika Taika. Yeah. Waititi. Taika. Yeah, Waititi. Waititi. yeah, so he was talking about um when he was doing the Jojo Rabbit, oh, yeah. and he plays Hitler, <laughs> and he said he just thought it was funny that a Polynesian Jew played Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. I like Jojo Rabbit. Jojo Rabbit was good. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's my second favorite movie of that year. Oh God, that was a great movie. Uh, let's see. So Barbie, I liked Barbie. I liked Oppenheimer. Uh, I have been watching the Mission Impossible movies because I've not seen them before. Have you ever seen them? Uh, I've seen a couple of them. I don't know if they were in order. Right. Uh, I, I know you're not them. a Tom Cruise fan, so you've not seen them. I've not seen any of them. And you've seen a couple. We've talked a little bit mm-hmm. about this. Yeah, and then I'm I'm actually watching the old show. Right, know. which I've never seen, but I watched the theme song a few times just to, to feel. So I've, I've, I'm, um, the reason why I'm watching this is because of Drew. Okay. <laughs> Drew's, a, Drew's a big Detail. Yeah, Drew's a big fan of Mission Impossible. And so me and Drew hung out a couple of weeks ago playing one of the games that we play. A nerd game. A nerd game, yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was leaving. He goes, are you going to see Mission Impossible this weekend or next weekend or whatever it was? And I was like, uh, I've only seen one or two of those films. And I saw them in the theaters. And those were the ones in the 90s. So, um, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think he lost a little respect for me. Oh, no. And I couldn't have that. Because I like Drew, I respect Drew, but I can't have him have think less of me because I haven't watched his movie. So I um, started watching them, and they remind me of the Fast and the Furious franchise. If the Fast and the Furious franchise started out ridiculous, there you go. Like it's the, ridiculous now. Oh no, it's, yeah, yeah, right. Like because Fast and Furious starts out with just just it's, guys stealing DVD players. Yeah, it's, yeah the <laughs> franchise yeah. is them still. Yeah, and then it turns into them becoming the Avengers. This is just like worse, ridiculous, and gets bigger. Yeah. Um, the first one rem- surprised me of the fact that um, there was a time in, in in our history where we thought floppy disks would either destroy or save the earth. Right. There's a lot of movies about fly and TV shows about floppy disks. You know. You know about those. Why are you asking? I- I'm more familiar with floppy disks than you are. Buddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. That's. <laughs> I'm familiar with them. I've, I've got one one better. Floppy disk is. Thank you very my much. ex husband, <laughs> my ex husband, when he was in the Air Force, worked for NORAD, and in the early nineties, you know, the big computers. That did you, if you ever saw War Games, you know, the big mm-hmm. that those were actually up there, and he had like big, like record player looking disk that data was stored on. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Um, there's a whole sequence. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy to think about. There's a whole sequence, and like the most famous sequence out of Mission Impossible 1, of just 
Tom Cruise falling from a roof, a ceiling, to get a floppy disk. <laughs> and I kept going, oh, this for a floppy disk? <laughs> and they didn't store hardly anything. They hardly anything. anything. And, like, yeah. in this, and the floppy disk, to be fair, the floppy disk doesn't, to be have, fair. To be fair. Fair. doesn't have that much information anyway. It's, no, it's just a list of names. It's a list of names. And so... Because that's all, that's all you need, though. Well, in this case, yes, because the... Pr- do you, do you want to? No, that? no. I'll tell. You. So, like, th- what they're after is the this list of names from all those people who are spies and their code names, so they can figure out which country which spies are, and they can sell them to the countries. It's very James Bondish. Very, very. But much, the U.S. But since they're not like none of the mm-hmm. people on this list are unofficial well, spies. Well, also, IMF is, is IMF is not affiliated with any particular country. They're right. But in the movies, they're 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 based. They're out mostly, of the I've never seen it. I don't even mo- know so, what. The so they're mostly is. American connected, but they're they're really like a global network. Uh, right, but they're I well, know. they don't become global until like the third one. Yeah, they're like really U.S. based and they're really U.S. focused in the first one, mm-hmm. first two, and then they start ma- branching out. Like we're all over the place. Yeah, we're, we have agents everywhere. Which, to be fair, the show was more. Th- to be right. fair. To be fair. But the they're basically they're basically US independent too. spy agency. Yeah. Okay. And so, but here's the thing: they're not official spies, and so if their names get out, they can just be executed for being in the wrong country. They're like, oh, you're spying on us, and no one claims you. Kill that guy, and so they were like, the whole movie's like, we gotta get the names, yeah. we gotta save the names, or other people, yeah. everybody will die. Well, like the assassins in John Wick. Yeah, yeah. They're I not mean, affiliated were, with anybody. Right, but. Yeah, you were. Jo- I mean, you were joking, and it's true. Like literally, every film is about Tom Cruise uh, gets a mission from his boss, starts to do the mission, finds out information that makes him go rogue about this mission. Now the IMF are also after Tom Cruise as well as. It's it, the three things that have these movies is that Tom Cruise gets a mission, Tom Cruise gets kicked out. And is on the run. Tom Cruise falls from something. <laughs> in some dramatic re- way, he falls from something. And then somehow rejoins the IMF after. Like in the s- third one, he does. He he's like he designs a fulcrum to f- like jump from building to building on, and it was just like, yeah. he does like math and stuff. And I'm like, that makes my brain hurt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you haven't even gotten to the ones where yeah, he just like, started making news every right. time he did them because like the third, what the next one is the is the building, is, mm. I think. I think four is when is when seventeen he, four. I'm seven, yeah. I'm at three. I think four is when he's is when he's on the tallest building. I mean, because that, that's when they good start for making him. news. Yeah, he's making like but, good for him. And he I'm does, glad he found his niche. He does all his well because he likes his own doing his own stunts. Yeah, he's he's he likes traditional acting in that regard. Is what he said is that he he thinks that it brings him back to like the older days of acting when actors always did their no, own stuff. he's an adrenaline junkie and an it egomaniac is, is what he is. It, it, Let's be honest. No lie. He I know, is, I'm just saying what he has said in I'm, Yeah, I'm sure what he That is, is why he would be Bieber. <laughs> now, now, though, <laughs> he, would he is... Be Bieber, all, now 100%. He, yeah. I'm a believer. No. But, but he is also, like, as a direct... Like, a lot of directors like working for him, too, in that regard, because then they can also get that close-up shot whenever he does the stunt, too, cause, which is... You can't do. My favorite thing about uh, the new one, which I've not seen yet, but the um, the t- the first trailer has them doing the first. Yeah, big you stump. see the you see the big stunt, H- in and the, the trailer. big stump is he's on a motorcycle, he's going down a mountain, and then he jumps off the mountain with a motorcycle and base jumps off the ma- motorcycle. They filmed that first in case he died. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, smart. Yeah, yeah. So smart. my seriously, question is, seriously, they feel why that, didn't they do that for the my airplane question one? Is because because he insists on doing his own stunts. Yeah. Does he pay for his own insurance out of pocket? Oh, absolutely. Or do that? I, he does. I well, doubt for, he does. Well, for Mission Impossible, well, he doesn't really need to because he's also the producer. Well, that's what I'm wondering. No, does I, it come? I, he, I, so who pays for that insurance? Paramount. The studio. Paramount. The studio does. St- that, that would be paramount. It's like, Jesus <laughs> the, Christ. The money they're not paying writers or actors right now, they're paying Tom Cruise's <laughs> insurance. insurance. All right, that was a burn. <laughs> hey, it's fine because he tried to promote the film while the strike's going on. Oh, did he? Yeah, he he went on Twitter and he was like, "Hey guys, it's okay to still promote your film while he should have got the list right." And and everybody everybody went after him for it. Yeah. yeah. As I like, said, ego. Yeah. That's word. Well, he's all, and I get why he tried to, you know, sneak his way out of it. It's because he has he has he's got money on the line because he's also he the, doesn't need he's the also, money. No, though. he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. But I get why he was trying to think of it because he is also the producer of these films. Oh no, it's all ego. He's like, this is my movie. Watch me. And, come watch and, me. And, and, and look, it's a thing. And, it's I'm a not, and I'm not saying he's right for doing it. And, I'm saying I, I get why. And 100 percent, it is his movie, man. When you watch his Mission Impossible movies, you know who the star is. Yep. This yeah. is a Tom Cruise joint, and it's going to be all Tom Cruise. I I've enjoyed them. I don't think I'm like. 
and he's not even producing them yet on right. the ones you're watching. Right. I but I, I I've enjoyed them. I don't know if I'm going to go back and that like Fast and Furious. I can go back and watch. Oh yeah, yeah, I love those. But they're fun. They're and I could put one of those. These I'm not going to put. In. There's a lot of thinking involved right. in this, and I'm just like just the math. just yeah. <laughs> the math turned me off. I was like, it's like nope. Right. I don't. But I, I like. Um, I think the later ones are a little bit better. Um, you get you get more. I I like Christopher McQuarrie's writing mm-hmm. in the later ones. And then I, I also like when you get Simon Pegg and all that. Yeah, Simon that. Pegg's in the third one. Yeah. He's, and so, and um, Philip Seymour Hoffman's the bad guy in the third one. He's really good. So, yeah. like, if someone can outact Tom Cruise, it's like he's going to do it. And it's just like, because it's, it's a different yeah. style of acting. But he's, and like, Philip Seymour Hoffman also is, is, um, pudgy and not really like built right. as like you would expect like in an action movie and he plays that all to his best strengths yeah <laughs> and it just it I, I appreciated it i was like oh go for you good for you philip so well rest done. in peace buddy yeah have y'all watched anything interesting i have been um up late to the game i'm always late to the game on series i don't know why i guess because i get so busy and then i find you know i hear oh you should watch this Long story short, I've been watching the Righteous Gemstones. Yeah. Oh, I'm completely yeah. caught up. I'm on the. Like, I finished the first season, but not watched the rest. So I'm. I have binged it because I have laughed. Jamie and I both are in love with this show. What it is that is, about? It's the most ridiculous. <laughs> it's comedy. So it's about a family that um, run a huge international um, religious church like yeah, you know a the huge big mega church like yeah. a mega church like okay. a big mega church and then they have all kinds of you know do things internationally but it's it's one of those and they they are fucked up i mean the family the father seems very sincere and like john I, goodman john goodman he is great and he he is the really? yes he's it's, HBO, it's really funny he's the head of the I church of and it. then he's got his three kids who are um Oh my God, it's just hilarious. You got Danny. See, Mc- now I'm gonna have you got Danny tonight. McBride in it, also, who's great. I don't know who he comedy. is. Lately. Oh, he's been in. He's he's legend in a lot of Will Ferrell type comedy. Uh, and see, stuff I didn't. Like that. No, I don't recognize him. I don't rec- The only uh, the only one other one I recognize is um, the youngest son from the Pitch Perfect movies. Oh, Adam Devine. Adam yeah, Devine. Adam Devine. <gasps> yeah, Adam Devine. Yeah, he's the only other actor I recognize in this whole thing. But it, it's hilarious. It is absolutely hilarious. It is. I mean, um, I, I they they poke fun out of so many different things. It's yeah. I, like I said, I watched the first season. Really enjoyed the first season. I need to go back and watch the third one, right? Yeah, now. third one, and we're all caught up. Yeah, now. So, so it's on Max. It's on Max. Yeah, yes. it's fantastic. Righteous gemstone. Righteous, yeah, righteous gemstone. Watching it tonight. Yeah, it's, you need it's to. Real funny. It's hilarious. Um, so we've been doing that, and I'm trying to think. I mean, just the new season of Outlander. I'm all caught up on, so. Is that? Sexy Scottish time traveling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's right. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. I want to make a joke, but the joke won't make sense because it came out in the last episode. I had a. <laughs> <laughs> I have movies. Thank you. That are my, like, all-time favorite movies. Sure. That things that I, like, make me feel um, a special way for whatever, you know, reason. We're talking about. Tingles or no, emotions? No, no, just emotionally, you know, okay. like that I have emotional connections to. You. And like last night we got home from wa- watching Oppenheimer and we got home early enough to, you know, l- you know let's watch a movie. And um, we watched Memoirs of a Geisha, which I've seen a million times. Good movie. But I did not realize Jamie had never seen it. Oh. And Aww. so we watched that together, which is kind of nice. I love that movie. So It's fun how he you still find it. those things. Yeah. Do you have a movie you're excited to show somebody that you've seen? Oh, I'm not the person to ask that question, Scotty. No, but you've seen uh, movies. Um, you've seen, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Has Jennifer been like, hey, we need to watch this together? Usually she knows the movies, and I I do not. Does she have any favorite movies? Like she oh, she loves The Wizard of Oz. I know that. That's I know that, but I meant like, you know. Um, probably. But hers are going to probably be the ones that we'd watch on this show. <laughs> like, I mean, like, right. <laughs> I don't know, but something like 16 Candles or. Just yeah, yeah, that kind of You know, something like that that, that I may have not ever show. seen, but she watched during, you know, when she was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, but not necessarily, no. 
I watched Kickboxer yesterday too. Now it's gonna like sit with me. I'm gonna have to figure it out. I kind of wanna. I wanna. I want to do a TikTok doing the dance scene. You should totally do a TikTok doing the <laughs> dance sure. scene. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> There's always movies I like to show people that I know they've seen. But I just like to show weird movies to people. So it's yeah. like. That's because you like to experiment, mm-hmm. buddy. <laughs> You're like a scientist. I don't. I mean. A mad scientist. They're weird. But they're movies that no, no. I like that are that Jamie would consider weird, I'm sure. Like, no, I tell Here's what it is. I watch a weird movie. That I like. I will fall in love with a weird movie, and then I like to share it with somebody to make sure I'm not crazy. And a lot of times I end with they don't like it, and I am I'm, I'm crazy because I like like detention, um, which I we're going to eventually do on the podcast. You've seen it before, but you don't remember. <laughs> but um, and detention is the. I remember you tell me I've seen it. I yeah. just don't remember that line. Um, Detention, I think it came out in 2010 or 11. Uh-huh. And it's probably my favorite movie that year. Because we watched it at the house with Josh. Yes. We, yeah. we got it from Redbox. I know all these things. I have no idea what oh. it's about. And it's a slasher film, sort of. But it's weird. And it's like, it's weird in all the best reasons. And like, I don't know if it's good, but I love it. If that makes sense. It's just like... I, I mean, yeah. It's it's so out there, and I'm like, someone put money behind this and made it. Well, it's like uh, it's that's like the, that's well, the Josh Hutchinson. Yeah, Josh Hutchinson. But see, yeah. uh, Ryan Re- not Ryan Reynolds, but uh, Dave uh, Dan Cook's in it. So, oh yeah, and yeah, he yeah. did great in it. But this is like when we watched City of Lost Children, and I thought it was amazing. Mm-hmm. I thought it was great, and it's a weird movie. It's absolutely oh, yeah, weird. Absolutely, but yeah. I'm like, I get, and I like immediately. It didn't take me any time to understand what was going right, on. Right. It's just like my brain connected right. to that film. So you're not crazy. You just like what you like. Not, or yeah. maybe I'm crazy. Well, there is that. Maybe we're both crazy. There's another it one just resonates with you differently. The, the other yeah. one, another one I really like that um, I, I wouldn't be a fit for the podcast. It's it's too obscure. Okay. It's called the Corn Dog Man. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of that. The bed that kills people. <laughs> That's what that reminded me of. The corn dog. Um, bed. Yeah. The Deathbed. Deathbed. Um, which is also something I wouldn't do on the podcast, mainly because it's boring. I you just, the way you said the cornhole man or the corn dog man. The corn, the corn dog, dog, dog man. man. Cornhole man is completely <laughs> different. A, yeah. It's a different It's a different film. movie. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Deathbed. D- the, uh, the bed that kills eats, people. Eats people. Eats people. My <laughs> oh my God. You ever seen Deathbed? No. We watched heard it because of, death- of Pat no. Oswald. Yeah, we did watch it because of Pat Oswald. <laughs> Wow. It's stupid. It is. It's it is. So dumb. It is dumb. I, I did I love read Patton Oswald. Um, Flowers in the Attic, like I said. I read. Oh, good. We can talk about that too. In a I did not. I, I just. I was at a point in my life where I was like, you know what? I just can't add their tragedy I, to my life. Right? <laughs> I. I, uh, I unfortunately have like five books I have to read right now. Priorities, man. Figure it out. Well, no. These are, <laughs> these are ones that I'm actually having to review because I have review copies. Do oh, it. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's one of those guys. Do it then. Uh, nice. So I was thinking about what you said because it's been on my mind about five minutes ago when you asked about movies. Sure. So <laughs> you guys know me and I'm the way that I was raised. So I don't. It's a premise have of the show, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I did not watch a lot of movies. What sticks with me more is TV shows. Sure, that'll right. work. Like I've always been the kind of person where it's like I, I can was recommend a TV girl too. TV shows. I know yeah. you, yeah, because w- they sink in with me. And I they know have at a one feeling. time you were a big fan of Reba. Reba will always have my heart. Yeah, I know uh, it's real big for you. Because and it's weird because I'm not a country music fan. I don't like Reba McIntyre singing. I don't. When she sings in the show, I'm like, okay, she's a wonderful person. She has a beautiful voice Fancy. to some people. Fancy's my I just I, I can't stand the way she sounds when she sings. Me and Steph know. was singing along yeah, in Fancy the last time we were carrying together. But I've never seen Reba. But mm-hmm. that's sh- the only reason I know that show is because when I moved into my apartment, nine months pregnant. 17, eight, 18 at the time, uh, it happened to come on, and it started at the beginning where Cheyenne is pregnant, and she's in high school. And so it was like, it just sure. clicked. Right. And so then I just got attached. So that's a that's a feel-good show. Mm-hmm. Um, my absolute favorite, it will always beat everybody, is Psych. Oh, yeah, Psych's good. Yeah. Psych, like, no, when I tell I'm you, like, I anything. stayed up to You'd watch like their Psych. releases of the movies. I was about to say, did you watch? Yes. The, yeah. so, so Psych will always have, like the biggest place in my mm-hmm. heart and jennifer has not watched them all mm-hmm. so those are things where it's like we got to watch that so i've been in this weird place lately and 
usually when I'm upset about something, I put Psych on. Sure. If something has happened, I watch Psych. It's like me and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Probably. I mean, like yeah, I will like it's your feel good. That one and Charm. Buffy and Charm. You, you I watch all the Charm too. Show. They're very good. Oh, I have not done Buffy yet. We have to do that. Yeah, we Buffy that. is amazing. Mm-hmm. I love the. I don't. I hated the movie. Absolutely hated it. But the show. But I love the show, and that that's happened like. On a lot of things. I it's don't hate the movie. It's not. It's. It's not Buffy to me. It's, I get it. It's the first. The Dark Horse comics did a version of the movie with the TV cast. Mm-hmm. So they made the story because I mean this because yeah. the movie's canon. Yes, because it it's all mentioned in the pilot. Right. And so, but Dark Horse did the story with with Mich- Sarah Michelle Gellar as, the, as yeah. the focus, which I thought was was good. It, it worked. It's, so at the end of the day, I'm, I'm I don't dislike it. Yeah, it's just I don't watch it a lot though. Yeah, I just really really like the series. You and know, it's it's been a minute since I've seen Buffy. I need a I need to do a rewatch. Oh, we should do it. I love it. Well, I mean, yeah, we should we should definitely do we that. Do we it. should just try to try to do a Buffy show. I wanted to really we, bad. We with um, it was actually Vicky and I were going to do it. We could always do a Buffy show. And then she got sick. Yeah, that she did. Vicky. Yeah, that Vicky. Yeah, because she was a huge Buffy fan. I did not know that. Yeah. But um. But mine's TV shows. I don't, how about TV shows that, that resonate? Like, do you have any TV shows that you make you feel good like that? Was that your Buffy? I know Buffy's one. So of So I have older stuff that I watch that makes me feel like um. Yeah, certain is <laughs> certain ways because based on you know what I watched with with like my dad, sure. like Mash, I love Mash, and it's because I used to watch Mash with my dad. So you know, obviously nothing I can actually relate to because I wasn't in the Korean War, right? Or <laughs> Vietnam, or Vietnam, based on or no, it's Korean. It's no, Korean. no, yes, it's ba- it happens during the Korean War. It's an allegory for the yeah, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, I get you. Yeah, but anyway, it so. Um, she was about to fight you on that. No, she was I, like, I mean, uh, no. No, just let me no, clarify. No, no. Like, I understand her. what you were talking let about. Let me clarify. There. Okay, so that, um, I love in watching any of the Star Trek stuff, you know, on repeat. That was, you know, just something that. Yeah, it's all, Pluto TV is often on my TV when I'm yeah, just not doing it. That kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, when I'm, when I'm, Flipping or wanting to watch reruns, it's it's literally it's either Buffy, Angel, or Charmed, are like my three that I just really relate to in weird ways, and I don't know why. So so if you did a Buffy show now, mm-hmm. and I'm all for it, I don't think we should do a Buffy show because yeah. I love Buffy, and I haven't. It's been I probably haven't done a watch there in like ten years, yeah, like a full watch there in ten years. So it'd be fun to revisit it. How would you do Angel? Would you do Angel afterwards, or would you do it concurrent? Because sometimes they cross over. There was there was a little bit of crossover. Um, Something to think about. I would probably. Yeah, that would be kind of weird because other than the couple of crossover episodes, there really isn't much to it because. Uh, you Something know, at the it. yeah, because at the end of Buffy, obviously, certain characters go over to Angel full time, and yeah. there's no more crossover. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because <laughs> Angel's got what two more seasons after that, or yeah. one more season after that, a couple so, more, I think. And then some people who left Buffy, you know, Buffy ended, they just moved over to the yeah. other show. Yeah. So it'd be interesting, but I definitely want to do a Buffy. Uh, for me, uh, certain places in my life. Like like you, mm-hmm. and I think that's why shows stick with me. So I got introduced to Star Trek: Deep Space Nine um, accidentally. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Amanda were uh, living together, and we were very very poor, and so we didn't have money to go out and do stuff. So we did a lot of stuff inside. So so like um, I love Final Fantasy VIII because of that reason because we played a lot of that together, mm-hmm. and then um, we happened to find Deep Space Nine in season seven. On the TV on Saturday nights on like ABC, uh-huh. like like after the news went off, yeah, and fell in love with that and watched all of that, and then we found a friend of ours who had taped the earlier seasons because this was before yeah. DVDs. It's my favorite and so, Star Trek series. Um, so we borrowed the tapes from her so we could watch them, and so that became a thing. 
So that that's one reason. That's, that's ER. Strangely enough, the same reason because mm-hmm. ER we happened to catch on the first episode when they started doing the repeats on Sunday nights on Channel mm-hmm. 15 after the news, and they would run two every Sunday night, and that was our thing from from 10:30 or 11 o'clock until one. We'd watch two episodes of ER, and we did that for years and caught up to like real time wow that's pretty fantastic and that's kind of that was that's kind of cool um i started watching that one because of um um captain what's his real name avery brooks he was on spencer for hire yeah and i used to love that show so yeah 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 and so it took a little bit to figure out figure it out but i got i really fell for ds9 and and that helped me get into the like i had watched star trek but i wasn't that i mean Outside of Star Trek 2, the movie, and I wasn't that much of a fan. Oh, I was a huge fan. And then that kind of turned me into a fan. I was like, oh, this stuff's pretty interesting. Um, the other the other thing for me is Ruby, two reasons. Um, I fell over when it first came, but I got to introduce it to you. Mm-hmm. And you and I have shared some nice right. Ruby moments. I but love Kate, Ruby. Case and I, that's the thing that made us friends. Oh, that's awesome. So because during the pandemic, I introduced it to her, mm-hmm. and that's how we – I mean, we were friends before, but, like, how we got, like, real close friends was, was yeah. introducing – now, I will say that her. back when I had first gotten married to my first husband and moved to Japan, um, we had AFI's television, which is your military mm-hmm. television or whatever on base. And, um, of course, you don't – it was before streaming. I mean, that was, you know, way before streaming. So you get what you get, period. And um, – they had, you know, some shows that were running in the States and whatever. But I, one of the things that they had running was the Hercules and Xena, those yep. two two series back then. So I used to love watching those. However, I've tried to rewatch them. Oh, whew, it's rough. They do not hold up. There's a lot of stuff so like that. So we need to redo them is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're hilarious. But... I didn't realize how darn campy they are until you go back and rewatch them. I never, never caught caught on to that. Um, but I know I remember like in the afternoons, like they they did a young Hercules story with Ryan Gosling, like it was a boy. Oh, it's well, this was with the Kevin Zorbo. Right, right. So, the, yeah. so he was playing Kevin Zorbo as like a boy. Oh wow, or a teenager, and they, and so and that lasted a season or so. That's the first thing I remember when I first noticed uh, Ryan Gosling. Well, it started as like movies, like little mini mm-hmm. movies with uh, it had Tawny Katane in them. And yeah, it's a Sam Raimi yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's why Bruce Campbell appears. Yeah. A couple oh times. yeah. Because yeah. Atolicus. Yep. <laughs> I remember. Him. Yeah, actually, actually um, what's his face from? Um, oh, what's his name? Why can't I'm terrible with actors' names. Well, you gotta let me know what he's from because you went. What's his face? Yeah. Okay. So he plays uh, McCoy in the new Star Trek movies. He's in. Carbon. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. He's in. The, he's actually in um, later episodes of Xena as um, I think he plays Cupid. <laughs> he has blonde hair and shit. It's hilarious. God, I'll never watch that. No, new, but it was new. It was very popular. Yeah, it was. Very I popular. mean, it's great. And then I, they had the animated movies straight to DVD. Never saw any of that. I yeah. Don't know. Hey, worth a watch because they're fun. I, I remember the the most I remember about Xena particularly was how popular it was at cons. Oh, and, yeah. And so, like... Xena uh, and Gabrielle were very popular amongst the ladies. Let's yeah, just they say. were. <laughs> yes, they were. Having had never even seen it, yes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that. This is just bing, bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they used to. <laughs> Did you see the outfit? Carl, Carl, uh, Carl Urban was uh, Julius Caesar. Caesar? Oh, I thought he was Cupid. Who you, played Cupid? Uh, Look at it real quick. I'm looking right now. Let's see. Who does number two work for? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. I really Apparently, he was both. Oh, he. I'll go say. Okay. But he has more credit for Caesar because he played more episodes of okay. Caesar. I say. I remember. I thought I'd remembered him as Cupid with the blonde hair. Yeah. Apparently, he did both. Well, there you go. Hell, I, I, I like it. And he was a baby. He was so young. I'm trying to remember. For, the first thing I noticed Carl Urban was was uh, Lord of the Rings. That was the Air Mirror. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Air Mirror, yeah. I think the first time I actually, I mean, I saw him in Lord of the Rings, but the first time I think I remembered, like, he stood out for me was the new Star Trek movies. Because he did a great job. Yeah, as well. yeah he's, a, he's a great McCoy. 
Well, I think that's about it. Uh, we'll talk about what we're watching next week. Okay. What is that? Well, next week we're watching Tu Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Oh, that's a great movie. Oh, I feel oh, like wow. I'm dressed appropriately. You for are that. dressed appropriately for it. You may have to wear Weird. that next week. I will wear it next week. <laughs> you have to rewear it when the you go. Exact outfit. After you see Barbie, you should. You should maybe <laughs> maybe I should wear my tiara. You, you know what? That would make sense as well. Th- that there would also go. make sense. And perhaps have a fruity drink. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps we'll see. Who knows? <laughs> Find out what we watch, uh, what we have, what we wear next week on <laughs> Cobra <laughs> Cantina. <laughs> this is Sky saying this is our contribution to the multiverse. Go ahead and make yours. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye.